All right, fourth lesson. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. This is about, uh, this is 9.5. You may have noticed we, we've skipped over 9.4 for a minute. Uh, we're going to come back and do it. But 9.5 is about uh, symmetry. This should be an easy one. This should be something like reminds you of what you've done before in art class or in younger grades, because this is hopefully not a totally new idea to you. Okay. A uh, figure has plane, in a plane has symmetry if there is some so type of isometry. Now, by this time, we've studied these kind of isometries, reflection, rotation, or translation, or glide reflection. We haven't done that yet, but that's not going to come up, actually, today. Uh, that maps the figure onto itself. Okay, so if there's some sort of transformation you could perform, and these are the ones we've done, of course. If you could, like this example here. If you were to perform a reflection um, on this whole entire blue pentagon, you were to reflect over this line, you wouldn't notice where it had gone, because it would land exactly where it is now. This point just reflects onto the same figure over on this, this side of it. So the reflection um, doesn't produce a new figure at all. It just uh, says we can reflect this and it stays right where it is. Uh, if it's a regular pentagon, it's got all kinds of lines of reflection. Any one of these lines would reflect that pentagon and leave it where it is. Now letters and naming systems would maybe change place. Like if this point is A, we'd call this A prime, fine. But the, the pentagon essentially lands on top of itself under the reflection in any one of these lines. Um, so if it's got lines of symmetry like that, we call those line symmetry, that would be under reflection. Um, so I'll just write the word line right here. Great. Um, there's other kinds of symmetry though. Line symmetry is probably the most common type of symmetry you talk about in, you know, second grade. Um, but there's, there's more than that. Uh, for instance, Pentagon, okay, so yeah, I already said that. Great. You can also have rotational symmetry. Now, this one doesn't maybe feel like the type of symmetry you're used to you're used to calling symmetry, but in geometry we talk about rotational symmetry or radial symmetry. I like rotational. So this figure here, there's no way to reflect this onto itself, but you could rotate it. If I um, had a center of rotation here at O and rotated this enough, this little spirally wing thing would land right on top of, of this one on here, and at the same time, this one would go here. We could rotate essentially this far, and we would get a um, copy that would land exactly where this one is now. So we say that has rotational symmetry. Propellers, fan blades, a lot of that kind of stuff has what we call rotational symmetry. This one, um, a little less interesting, but yeah, if I spun this completely halfway around, so this 180 degrees, uh, this little stairway would land right on top of that little stairway and it would look just like it does now just flipped halfway around so that also has rotational symmetry this picture of the four birds i could rotate this 90 degrees each bird goes to the neighbor bird and it lands just like this now we wouldn't be able to distinguish it from the beginning so those are all this one looks like it's about 90 degrees um, that way rotational symmetry there's so for for those for symmetry to happen r rotationally of course just kind of like with re reflections we need the line with rotational symmetry, we need a center and an angle, just like we did with um, the instructions for rotation. If it's 180, if it's a half turn, uh, they call that point symmetry. I was saying before when I was doing the lesson on, on ro ro rotations and we were talking about half turns, it kind of feels like a reflection in one point. Um, that's kind of. I mean, um, anyway, it's it a special name. It's called point symmetry. So the figure two here has point symmetry. Figure three also has point symmetry. If I was to rotate this 180, it would look like just like it does now also. Um, so that would be also have point symmetry, but it has more symmetry than that because it also has this 90 degree symmetry. These little red lines here are not lines of symmetry. If I folded this thing on the line, if I reflected this uh, picture over the, one of these lines, you notice all the birds would be facing the wrong direction. So it wouldn't look the same as this. It would have reverse orientation and that doesn't count. So this, this only has reflection symmetry. Oh, sorry, rotation symmetry. There's plenty of items in the universe that have rotation symmetry and reflection symmetry. This one would also have a rotation symmetry. If I was to turn this thing, I guess that's 72 degrees, it would look like just like it does now, but it also has lines of symmetry. These appear to me to only have rotational symmetry. They don't have reflection. Okay, so what's, what's the rotational symmetry? They mean, um, well, we need the center also, first of all. And we also need the number of degrees between 0 and 360. 0 is no fun, like who cares? And same thing with 360. If you had to rotate something 360 degrees to get to land on itself, well, like, well, thank you very much. You know, who cares about that? Anything can rotate 360. So it's only when it's between there, you know, less than 360 that we care. So this one, how many degrees would that be? Oh, it looks, first of all, it looks like the one I drew here was positive, and it's one-third of a circle. So, sorry, that's not positive, that's clockwise. 
it would be negative 120. This one, again, center O, this was 180. You could also call that negative 180, that's fine. This is around center O, and I already said this would be 90. Now, is that positive or negative? That's positive. Okay, great. I know why I'm doing my answers in blue today and not red. Woo, this is a big font type. All right, the number of times a figure maps onto itself as it rotates from 0 to 360 is called the order of symmetry. So let's just pause right there. Order of symmetry is the number of clicks, kind of, before it gets back to where it started. So this thing kind of has three positions it could rest in before and look at, like it does now. So this, I don't think it's hard to figure this out. It's like if this were a fan, it would have three blades we're talking about. So this would have order three rotational symmetry. This has order two, kind of has two blades sticking out. This has order four. Uh, while the magnitude of symmetry is what we've done here, this is the magnitude. The magnitude, put this in your notes. What we really just wrote down here was magnitude. The magnitude of symmetry is the degrees. Is the smallest angle through which a figure can be rotated. So, you know, I said 120 here. I could have said 240, but the ones I listed here were magnitudes because they were smallest. Um, and that's usually the most interesting because if you listed a bigger one, like if I said this was 180, like, well, that kind of that kind of um, ignores the fact that, that 90 is also there. So yeah, you could say 180, but 90 is more interesting because 90 is actually the smallest. To find the magnitude of symmetry, you just divide. So let me put magnitudes in here. Let me switch back to red. So let me put orders in here in red. The order of symmetry here, this would be three. It's like a three-blade three blade fan. This is like a two-blade fan. This is like a four-blade fan. And notice, four times 90 is 360, two times 80 is 2 times 180 is 360, 3 times 120 is 360. So you can always um, divide the order of symmetry by the magnitude or vice versa. Sorry, 360 divided by the order gives you the magnitude or 360 divided by the magnitude is the order. So not a big surprise. All right, in 3D, now this is kind of weird because this is the first time in the book they've really talked about 3D stuff officially and it's uh, about symmetry. But you see this in everyday life and it's not that hard to imagine. Uh, plane symmetry is if we could reflect something in a plane. And reflection in a plane is defined just like reflection in a line. So uh, anything on this side reflects to the other side in such a way that the plane is the perpendicular bisector of that connection. Um, plane is just like, you know, you slice something in half and you get, um, if we're talking about plane symmetry, you slice it in half and you get two congruent mirror images of each other. Most living creatures have that, like this butterfly could slice like this. People are not 100% symmetric, but they're pretty darn close. You could Imagine cutting someone in half with a mirror right down the uh, middle of them, and you would get two symmetrical halves, more or less. Uh, it's easier to do that with, you know, with perfection with theoretical geometric objects, but it's the same idea. And then, just like, okay, so we have plane symmetry. We also have rotational symmetry in three dimensions. If there's a line you could use to kind of stab or skewer that thing, and if you were to spin it around that line, it had any kind of angle where it would stop and look just like what it what it started as, just like this. We had a point of, of rotation in the middle and we spun it around and it looks just like it does. If you had a axis of symmetry, we stabbed through and held that in our hands and twirled it. If it stops and looks just like it did at the start uh, without going 360 degrees, then we say it has an axis of symmetry or, or rotational symmetry about a line. This one's kind of weird because it's a circle, it's a cone. So I could stop this at any number of degrees and it looked just like it did. Uh, if I had something more like, I don't know, a pyramid, like if you can imagine a, a square pyramid laying on its side kind of like this, and we stab that through the axis, I'm guessing I could spin that 90 degrees and it look just like it does here. So there's a dotted edge back here. I could spin that 90 degrees and it would land just like it is. This, this, is a got infinite, this has infinite order symmetry. This has 90 degrees magnitude. Okay. Uh, we're not going to do much 3D stuff, honestly, in the test. It's just give you some more ideas about how symmetry looks and works and feels. Okay, locate, locate the center of symmetry and draw all line symmetries. All right, center of symmetry, we'll be talking about rotational. Magnitude of symmetry, this, this is all rotational stuff. Oh, this is for rotational. Locate the center of symmetry. Yeah, well, I think for a regular polygon, it's not hard to imagine that that center of symmetry is right here. It's where, whenever you have lines of symmetry that, that intersect, so yeah, there's a line of symmetry here. There's a line of symmetry here. If you've got more than one line of symmetry, it's the intersection of those. First of all, they all, they all intersect in one, in one point. It's a property you can prove. And if there's anything that would ever even be considered as the center of rotational symmetry, it would be that point. So it's this point, yes or no, in terms of 
rotational center symmetry. This might be a, a, a center of rotation symmetry. It might not be because the figure might not have it. This one does, actually. If I rotate this point all the way to here, I would get that figure to look just like it does now. That would be 120 degrees. I'm kind of talking about all the symmetry at once. Um, so figure one has order symmetry three. The magnitude is 120. Rotational symmetry number one. What is that supposed to do? Name two rotational symmetries. Okay, so I have to name this point, I guess. Uh, if I rotate around center A, 120 degrees, that works. I could also rotate around center A, negative 120 degrees, that would work. Okay, let's do a different one. Uh, there's a line of symmetry here. I think lines of symmetry are probably easier to find, so let's just do the lines first and go, okay, there's a line of symmetry. So if there's any center of rotation, it would be that one. Um, sometimes people think, well, maybe this is a line of symmetry also. Turns out this would not be a line of symmetry. Let me draw it and show you why. That is not a line of symmetry because if I was to reflect this point over that line, it would kind of go up here somewhere. I mean, think perpendicular bisector, right? This point up here is not on the rectangle, right? It's in a totally different place. So that doesn't count. We can't do that. So these are the only lines of symmetry we have. So we have two lines of symmetry. Do we have rotational symmetry? Yeah, if I took this point and rotated it far enough, rotated it all the way around to there, it would... You know, this point would rotate back here, this point would rotate here. We, would, we could flip this over. You could turn your head over or turn your paper around right now, 180 degrees. This looks just like it does here. So if I rotate this 180 degrees, I'm good. Um, that's in order two. This has rotation around center B of 180 degrees. I guess is the same thing as... Oh, you know what? Let's learn. Let's use half turn. It's the same as a half turn around center B. That's all I have to say. Uh, figure three, all right, any kind of lines here? I don't think so. If I draw a line like this, or if I draw a line like this, if I reflect this at all, um, the orientation reverses. So if you looked at this in a mirror, the waves would go the opposite direction. And there's no way to, if I had a stamp of this shape, I couldn't, um, if I had a reflection, so I had the backward stamp of this, I couldn't stamp it on top of itself. So it would definitely be backwards. Where these, if they're backwards, they look just like they do now. This one backwards is totally different. So. The only thing this might have, possibly have would be rotational symmetry. And I think if I find this point, this, if you can imagine this, right here in the center, I think I could rotate this exactly 180 and that point would go down there and we would get um, our 180 also again. Flip your paper around and see if that works for you or take your laptop screen, flip it up. <laughs> oh, I'll call this point C. These are going to be exactly the same as one before. I could rotate that 180 degrees or I could do a half turn and see it's the same, it's the same idea. Okay. Gonna make this a one part. Complete the following figures so they have specified symmetries. Symmetry in line J. That just means we need to reflect this over line J. So we should be getting pretty good at this. This corner is gonna reflect down here. Great. This corner is gonna reflect over here. So it's gonna look kind of like that. This corner, two and a half squares, two and a half squares. Yeah, it's gotta go right there. Okay, great. This point has to stay where it is. So it's on the line. So something like this. This now has symmetry in line J. Uh, all of these rotationals, so if it has 90, it's automatically going to get all these, because 90, and then again, and then again, uh, about 0.0. Um, and it doesn't really say positive or negative. Actually, I have to go both positive and negative, don't I? So rotate this 90 degrees. How long is this? This is 6, so it's got to go 6 out this way. And then I guess the next question is, should this little, should this corner, should this turn up, or should this turn down? If it turns up, it's going to look like blades of a fan. If it turns down, it's going to look like wings of a bug, and that would be line symmetry. I don't want that. I want blades of a fan, so I need to go that way. Then I go six up, two over, same idea this way. Oh, that's a bad one. And six out, not six, and two down, so something like this. Sorry that's so bad. It's really kind of hard to control this thing perfectly. But we get something like that. Wow, that's really bad. Let me redo that with straight lines. Okay, this is going to look way better. Okay, great. That's what that's supposed to look like. All right, state whether the figure has any plane symmetry. That was the last one. I want 30 seconds. Yeah, this would, I mean, again, we haven't really studied three-dimensional stuff here, but if you can imagine slicing this exactly halfway through its height, you would, you would um, make two congruent versions of this that would be reflections of each other. Um, and we could actually, look, if this is a regular pentagon, we could spin it around a central axis, but I don't think it's regular. The other one, the only plane symmetry it has is if you slice it in the middle this way. 
kind of the, the funny way to slice that. And we kind of slice through just like that. Okay, I'm out of time. See you later.